topic that we have chosen today is very very relevant and over the next four weeks we'll cover different aspects of calcium uh, problems and pathophysiology including hypocalcemia hypercalcemia rickets and uh, renal tubular acidosis month old boy with respiratory distress who also had hepatomegaly and cardiac failure was in fact admitted under the cardiac unit so this child was admitted as cardiomyopathy in the cardiac unit with a very low ejection fraction and at that point of time, when they evaluated further, they found that the child actually had prolonged QT interval and was found to have hypocalcemia. And then the referral was done to us. And what we found that this child actually had a vitamin D deficiency. And now we know how severe vitamin D deficiency can mm. cause cardiomyopathy. Now, this was those early ages when this was not really easily available and was not really informed. So unfortunately, this child had to go on ventilator and a lot of other complications happened. But till date also, we occasionally see patients with cardiomyopathy. So hypercalcemia is a significant uh, cause of concern and we need to have a proper evaluation, assessment and management to identify in that regard. All of you can go and have a look at our website, learning.growsociety.in, which has got a lot of information about pediatric endocrinology, including e-learning resources in the form of YouTube videos, uh, our platform, which has got validated tools for assessment, as well as courses uh, for fellowship programs and postgraduate programs, also courses, which are a lot of modules available. We routinely conduct grand rounds, uh, the postgraduate lecture series, as well as specific rounds related to pediatric endocrinologists uh, on a monthly basis. We have got publications which can be accessed both uh, in an e-version as well as uh, the hardcore version and the uh, mobile application, which really allows evaluation and management of pediatric endocrine disorders very easily. So what I'm going to do today is that we'll talk a bit about pathophysiology to begin with, then we'll talk about criteria and etiology. And then from there, we'll talk about assessment, management. And finally, since this is directed more towards pediatricians and postgraduates, we'll also have some very practical questions uh, which have been prepared in the form of OSCEs as well as questions which will be highlighted. So uh, we have a case, nine-year-old boy with short stature with poor appetite, nausea and vomiting. Uh, there's a past history of uh, poor urinary stream with history of PUV. The child underwent fulguration at five years of age. On examination, the child... The child has failure to thrive with weight and height below minus 2 SDS, acidotic breathing and pallor. The investigations show anemia, serum creatinine of 1.9. Um, apart from that, the other uh, workup was essentially normal. Mild metabolic acidosis, pH of 7.1, bicarb 18. So now this child was diagnosed as CKD, started on nodosis and K-bind. One week after starting therapy, the child developed carpopetal spasm. So what has really what has happened and how could this have been prevented? You can answer on the chat, uh, the QA or the chat, you can answer and uh, we can then go from there. So what do you think has happened? You have a child who had long standing hypo uh, calcium stores which were low, but suddenly he has developed uh, hypocalcemia now. So while people answer, Dr. Dhani, what do you think could be the reason? Uh, so here, the important thing to note is that nodosis was started. On al uh, starting alkali therapy, there is uh, a shift of uh, ionic calcium to the bound form because of increased uh, negative so charge. That's a very, very important point. When you increase the alkalotic level, the anionic albumin increases, the calcium level goes down. And Dr. Barani said that we should have added calcitriol at that point of time. I think that's a very, very important point from Dr. Barani. We'll uh, now move forward to the next uh, one. So, uh, yeah. Moving on to the next case. Yes, we have a seven-year-old girl, a uh, case of nephrotic syndrome. Uh, she underwent a routine panel of workup and on investigation, she was found to have calcium of 7.9. So the doctor went ahead and uh, did the phosphorus, PTH, yeah. vitamin D levels. Phosphorus was normal. PTH was 32, so in, in the normal range, vitamin D was again in the adequate levels. The child was, however, referred to you for hypocalcemia investigation. So in the presence of low calcium, this normal PTH, do you think this is hypoparathyroidism? Would you like to work up this child for hypocalcemia? And Yeah, the yeah. first question is whether it's hypoparathyroidism. You have a low level of total calcium and a PTH which is inappropriately normal. So I think uh, we'll take answers from that. Meanwhile, there are a few answers from the previous one. Dr. Sekhar Malidi has mentioned alkalosis versus in hypocalcemia. Absolutely right for the last one. Uh, now, in this case, uh, whether we really think this hypocalcemia 
Yes, Dr. Anand has mentioned that this is because of hypoalbuminemia. So, Dhani, this is not yes. really hypocalcemia. So, it's not hypoparathyroidism. Yes. And, and how would you calculate the corrected calcium? So, again, 4 minus uh, 1.5. That is the serum albumin men level mentioned here. So, that is 2.5 into 0. 0.8. So, yeah. So, we have calcium definitely. So in that case, the calcium will be 9.9. .9. So this is not really a calcium deficiency in that perspective. So we have these two interesting cases. Now we'll move forward to the third scenario. Again, we have a four-year-old boy with failure to thrive. As we can see, the weight is minus 3.9 uh, Z scores. The height is at minus 1.9. The mid-arm circumference is low. The child is irritable, has a loss of buccal fat pad that you can clearly visualize. Now here, as you can see, the corrected calcium is also on the lower side, 8.2. So again, the doctor went ahead with investigation. Your PTH is 32. Vitamin D levels are extremely low. Phosphorus is again on the lower side. What is the cause of hypercalcemia here and how would you go to correct it? Knowing that this child is not acutely symptomatic at present, uh, the hypercalcemia that you can see it was only... Uh, Present on investigation. So we will seek responses. So this child is asymptomatic hypocalcemia with a low phosphorus and a low vitamin D. Now, this vitamin D level is not that low, Dhani, which we normally see in the setting of vitamin D deficiency. Yeah, so vitamin D deficiency causing hypocalcemia, the levels are very low. So do you think something else might also be contributing? So we have answers, nutritional tickets from Dr. Bhanani, which definitely vitamin D deficiency is playing a role. Vitamin deficiency again, Dr. Shekhar, but any other thing other than vitamin D that we'll think of. We magnesium also, yeah, so magnesium also becomes absolutely important. So we have got vitamin D and magnesium both in this setting. And that is again, the magnesium deficiency is causing, uh, is making the PTH levels not rise um, appropriately as they should have actually in the setting of hypocalcemia. And what's the other marker of magnesium deficiency in this case, uh, Vibha? Another marker, uh, sir, potassium is also on the lower side. Yes, so there is hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, of course, look at magnesium. So vitamin D and magnesium, both generally when I talk about hypocalcemia, which is severe, vitamin D is less than 5. So there is some other thing which is playing a role here in this case. Yeah, next case. A 10-day-old girl with focal seizures for one day. She was born uh, term by LS sec uh, cesarean section. Birth weight was normal, 4 kgs. On examination, she was not febrile. She had no obvious dysmorphism. On investigation, what we found was that the sepsis screen was negative. Calcium was very low at 6.7 with an ionized calcium of 3 uh, milligram per deciliter. PTH level was 130, vitamin D levels were low, and of course, for seizure, sugar sugars were confirmed to be in the normal range. So, in the setting of this child with hypocalcemia, what other family member would you like to screen here? And how will you manage this hypocalcemia? What root of calcium? How, what will the uh, how will you treat this hypocalcemia? So, uh, this is again an interesting case, a sort of a early onset sort of a thing. Uh, hypocalcemia, so maternal, yes, Dr. Robert is, uh, Dr. Robert Hamilton is mentioning that we should do maternal calcium phosphorus ALP, very important because of two reasons. One, rare possibility whether there is a hyperparathyroidism there and sometimes vitamin deficiency can also present in this age group. So we need to be aware about this case. So there's a low vitamin D, so mother should be screened. Now, the other big question is, what sort of treatment would you give for this child? So... Uh, Vibha, what do you think at this point? The child has seizures. So the child is uh, having symptomatic hypocalcemia, so we should acute, we should uh, do the acute correction. Yeah. So we have to give intravenous uh, calcium bolus followed by infusion. infusion. And uh, very importantly, which we mentioned earlier, that you should always give calcitriol in this setting. Otherwise, they will have a, a recurrence of hypocalcemia. So a three-day course of calcitriol is usually good enough in that regards. Yes. So next case, Dhani. So in the same, in, in the child, in the mother of this child, yeah, yeah. she was a 24-year-old female, had no major complaints, no significant uh, history in the uh, antenatal period or past illness. However, on investigation, she was found to have hypercalcemia with uh, 
phosphorus on the lower side and pth high to 30 high pth levels uh, her urine calcium creatinine ratio was high and ultrasound showed nephrolithiasis at lower poles so what are we dealing here this mother we want we thought could be vitamin deficient but suddenly she is hypercalcemic so anybody can have a guess what is the problem here so this is our rebound so like infant or diabetic mother mother is diabetic child becomes hypoglycemic here the mother is hypercalcemic the child becomes hypocalcemic because pth axis is independent of the maternal growth so if your calcium is high in the mother calcium is high in the baby pth axis gets suppressed after birth you have hypocalcemia so as uh, discussed earlier and dr anand has already mentioned Maternal hypercalcemia is the cause of hypocalcemia in this scenario. So we'll move forward to the next scenario. Go okay, on. so we have a 10-year-old boy with seizure. Calcium was uh, 7.2, albumin was normal. So we know the corrected calcium was definitely low. Serum creatinine was normal and PTH was very, very high. So high PTH, low calcium. So you've what got hypocalcemia, hyperphosphatemia, and hyperparathyroidism. Hyper so I think this is very important. We showed this case. So which clinical clue will give you the diagnosis right away? And we'll see if somebody answers that question. So this is an older child, not a very young child. And the PTH is high. Of course, creatinine is normal. So there's only one possibility as we discussed. Uh, creatinine is normal. So brachymetacarpia, obesity, calcification, cataract, all those was pseudo hypoparathyroidism and which of the parents may have hypocalcemia in this case mother or father so we like to have input from the, the audience whether the mother will be affected or the father will be affected with hypocalcemia so Vibha, what do you think who would the have mother, been will affected? Be, mother will be affected mother will have hypocalcemia yes so pseudo hypoparathyroidism is an imprinting defect in which the manifestations depend upon the inheritance from the parent so there is a maternal inheritance if you get it from the father you will develop only skeletal manifestations but you will not develop hypocalcemia so again this is a important thing to remember so we will move forward towards the next case again uh, uh, dhwani Okay, so eight-year-old boy with hypocalcemia, he was diagnosed with hyperparathyroidism, was started on calcium and calcitriol supplements. Now mother has noticed an increased pigmentation and white coating of tongue that she has noticed for a very long time, but never really paid an attention to. So do you think this hypoparathyroidism was transient and is getting better now? And... So again, this is a very important scenario. Somebody who is hypoparathyroid, if you have treated them, it is very difficult to get their calcium in the normal range. Whatever dose you use, it's very, very difficult. So suddenly, if you develop hypercalcemia, suddenly these things happen, you have to be worried about that. So this is, Dr. Shekhar has already mentioned, Dr. Irshad has already mentioned, this is APS1, Dr. Bharani, so all three were very quick. So anybody who has got hypoparathyroidism in childhood, beyond the uh, typical age for Dijot syndrome, think of a APS as an important possibility. The second most common endocrine manifestation of APS1 is cortisol deficiency. Cortisol deficiency causes hypercalcemia. So I think this is a very classical setting. So anybody who has got hypoparathyroidism with low calcium requirement, diabetes with low insulin requirement, uh, diabetes insipidus with low AVP requirement, hypertension with low antihypertensive requirement, Think of an evolving cortisol deficiency. I think that's a big message coming out of that case. I think now we've got some rapid fires. Dhani? Okay, so the first one, 50% of total calcium is available in the ionic form. Is that true or false? So you can just chip in the answer right in the uh, text or the Q&A. Yes, so this is true. Dr. Bharani and Dr. Sekhar are mentioning. I think yes, 50% is Ionic and 50% is bound. Next. Okay, so this was a trick question actually. So 99% of total calcium is in the bones and only 1% is, is. Okay. Yeah. 50 this was a that. trick question. Total, you should have mentioned total body calcium. So total. I think, uh, yeah. So it was a trick one. We could have mentioned total body. Anyway, yeah. We carry forward. Uh, what is the cause of hypercalcemia in a newly diagnosed case of leukemia who was started on chemotherapy? 
Yes, so Dr. Irshad has mentioned this is a tumor lysis syndrome. So tumor lysis will reduce all the intracellular points. Phosphorus goes up. You will have a chelation. Next one. And okay, so what is the structure? What type of hormone is PTH? And what is the protein or what pathway does it act via? Okay, so PTH is a... We will wait for people to come in. Which type of hormone means which is the chemical composition, the chemical structure, and which second messenger is the one which PTH acts. So we talked about uh, definitely about the second messenger path, about the axis when we talk about pseudo hyperparathyroidism. So PTH is clearly a peptide hormone and it acts via the G protein coupled receptor, GNA is one pathway through the cyclic AMP pathway. Dr. Musa Kuti is right at that point of time. Uh, next one, uh, Dhwani. We have a two-week-old uh, baby with subtle facial dysmorphism and cleft palate. The echo shows conotruncal defect. What is the condition and what is the cause of hypocalcemia in such patients? I think, again, very nicely discussed by our Vibha earlier. So this is anybody in the neonatal period, if you diagnose hypocalcemia, look at thymus, look at cardiac shadow, look at cleft lip, cleft palate, and you will get the diagnosis. This is Dijot syndrome. Dr. Irshad is right. Dr. Bharani is right. And this is Dijot syndrome with hypoparathyroidism. The fish will give you a diagnosis of the contiguous gene deletion. Yes. And what is the clinical parameter that must be monitored during calcium infusion and why? Yes. So if you give calcium, what may happen? Of course, ECG or the heart. Very important, Dr. Barani has mentioned that. So you have to have a close monitoring of the ECG as well. Go and have a look at our website. And uh, there are a lot of resources available, the courses which are available, as well as the books and the mobile application.